जस्ट चेक कर मीटिंग इज लाइव स्ट्रीम अच्छा I'll just check on YouTube as just to know. Okay. Okay, so I can see on YouTube that uh, we are live. Okay. Okay. Uh, so good evening. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, it's two minutes. So we'll start. Uh, at 8 o'clock at 8 o'clock yes at 8 o'clock yes we can see the live stream people have started joining uh let me check Uh, yes, few people have मल्लर वी आर गुड टू गो इट्स इट मैन हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू ज्योतिर्दत परिसंस्था स्टॉक ऑन जियोलॉजिकल वंडर्स ऑफ लोनार क्रेटर बाय मिस स्नेहा रोडे सो विद अ अपकमिंग लोनार टू टू विद अ अपकमिंग टू टू लोनार ऑन 4th 5th एंड 6th ऑफ मार्च वी हैव ऑर्गेनाइज्ड अ स्टॉक टू गिव यू अ ब्रीफ आईडिया अबाउट a uh, lonar crater about its geological importance and uh, how it was formed and uh, what importance it holds and what kind of uh, information can we get about the uh, crater its formation and the water uh, composition that uh, and the water that it holds so a little brief about uh, our today's speaker uh, ms sneha rode so uh, sneha ma'am uh, holds a master's degree in geology and currently she is working as an assistant professor of geology at, uh, at the college of military engineering in pune she is also a visiting faculty at the department of environmental science at pune university and a faculty of environmental geology at ferguson college in pune she is pursuing her phd in geochemical and petrogenic uh, petrogenetic study of mars using martian meteorites and in situ uh, in situ um, mission data at the geology department of pune university she has worked as a scientist at space application center of isro at ahmedabad so uh, without any further ado uh, i would like uh, ms sneha rode to take over the uh, session thank you thank you very much for the introduction mallar a very good evening to everyone uh, the speakers who are on uh, youtube and uh, good evening i hope uh, i am able to instill some uh, curiosity about lonar crater at the end of this talk so we were thinking a little bit about what topic to put whether geology of lonar or uh, you know something just straight forward but uh, somehow i wanted to keep that word geological wonders of lonar and i hope by the end of this you all will agree to that and um, this is i think my eighth or ninth consecutive year with jyotir vidya parisanstha that i am talking about lonar So it's a very dear topic of uh, mine, and uh, so basically, I started this work somewhere around two thousand nine, two thousand eight. I began this as um, my master's thesis or master's dissertation, and uh, I think uh, my love for lunar has never decreased. It has uh, ever increasing since then. So it's it's been more than a decade that I am uh, studying about this, and uh, so we'll get started. a little bit about what we are going to talk today uh, we'll speak about a little bit about impact cratering in the solar system in general 
So before we talk about Lonar specifically, Lonar as an impact creator, we'll first understand this impact cratering and then specifically about Lonar, the geology of Lonar and why it is a wonder, what makes it, what makes it unique. So I think by the end of it, there should be at least 10 uh, points that we all come out with, uh, you know, what is unique about this place and why we all should visit there definitely, right? So this all uh, starts, this impact cratering or planetary processes all begins right in, uh, you know, when the solar system started forming. So at that time, when it was still in a very, uh, you know, bud stage, when it was still forming, uh, this process of impacts or collisions was much common there. So we are talking about somewhere more than 4 billion years back, right? So impacts was a very normal thing at that time in the solar system. And uh, it continued up to 3.8 billion years. So we call that as a period of heavy bombardment or period of bombardment where this impact that every small body or big bodies, they were colliding against each other, planets were forming, satellites of planets were forming, something that was already formed was being kicked out of its orbit or all these things, right? So in geology or in uh, planetary science, we consider impact cratering as one of the primary phenomena, you know, one of the most fundamental phenomena, just like volcanism is, right? So the same way we are having this impact cratering, which is very important process as a planetary process, which has shaped the planets, which has shaped the solar system and the satellites or the moons even, right? So it is, it is also able to trigger volcanism or when the impactor collides against a planetary body, whatever is the magma which is deep below, that may come off in the form of magma outpourings, right? So it is triggering a lot of mechanisms. Definitely it is triggering uh, some, something like, uh, you know, earthquakes, volcanoes as well. Even the moon origin theory, one of the theory which says that how moon has formed, that is also say, uh, you know, uh, gives the reason that it is because of a huge impact. And uh, that is how the moon formed from the earth itself. <clears throat> if we know the uh, rotation of the Venus is also, you know, compared to the other planets, it is opposite. So that is also attributed to impact cratering. And there are many theories which say that water on earth or the origin of the chemical components also has come from the outside, right? So just as a phenomena, if we see as a planetary phenomena, impact cratering is definitely very important that why we should study that, why the curiosity around it. Not only that, uh, if we just uh, talk about uh, Earth, you know, or not about other planets, if we talk about Earth specifically, at least one mass extinction event is attributed or the most, much uh, you know, uh, accepted theory is that there was an impact somewhere around 66, 65 million years back and that hit the earth and that is how um, you know, there was a mass extinction. But what happens, where, where did this happen? This was somewhere in um, the Gulf of Mexico and the crater there is called as the Chicxulub crater. Right, so this is a huge impact. It's around 280 meters diameter. Imagine the uh, size of this event, which was there. It was huge. Now, to produce a crater of two, 280 kilometer, what must have happened after that? Can we even visualize what must have happened after that? So definitely there was magma, which was outpouring, which was coming. There was a huge amount of, uh, you know, debris, which was thrown out. All the rocks from the interior, they came out, right? Uh, there was huge forest fires and uh, a lot of ash, uh, ash material, dust material, which completely covered the atmosphere. In fact, there are evidences which say that this continued, these effects continued for almost two years where uh, there was decreased temperature globally. That is the entire earth was uh, without a summer uh, for two years, in fact. So this is how impact can trigger, you know, it can cause uh, something which will go on for years if we are talking about some event like Chicxulub or some impact cratering at that scale. And definitely we know that uh, in this event, even the dinosaurs have got extinct. Right. 
So almost not only dinosaurs, but almost 70% of the species were completely wiped out at that particular event which was there, right? So that is why we need to study these impact craters and impact cratering, uh, right? If we just question, if we just ask a question that where do we find these impact craters? So just have a look at all this, all these photos, they are from across the solar system. So we can see that where we find these impact craters are, are almost on all planetary bodies, almost on all solid bodies in the solar system. So this is a very common phenomena which took place. We see craters on moon. Uh, in fact, the bright rays, when we look at the moon and the bright rays we can see, they are the material which has been thrown out from these impact craters. So uh, I think whenever we look at the moon, the first things, the first features we see is definitely the craters, right? They are on Mars. They are very common, beautiful craters on Mars. Uh, in fact, we can see a very simple bowel-shaped crater, a perfect circular bowel-shaped crater down here. We can see uh, just above this, this is a dual impact crater that is just, uh, you know, when the impactor was about to collide, it split into two. It, it split into two and it, you know, formed this kind of a double impact crater. So uh, these are very interesting things. We see craters on Mercury. We see them on satellites of outer planets. Uh, like we see that on Callisto, Mimas or Ganymede. We see everywhere. It is very common phenomena, right? So let us come back to the Earth now. Uh, having said about the other planets in the solar system, let us come back to Earth. So if we just see, you, you can just uh, you know take a few seconds to look at this world map showing the impact craters on the Earth. Every red dot here is indicating an impact crater. And on Earth, there are 190 impact uh, craters which have been confirmed. As of today, there are at least 10 more craters which are still being studied, which are, which are probable or possible sites. So maybe by the year end or, uh, you know, at the end of two years, that number would be 200. You can see and one is lunar that we're going to be talking about today. The other impact crater, uh, the red dot which we see in India is the Dhala crater that is in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, in fact, it is one more good news for us in India that there's one more crater which has been confirmed as an impact crater site, that is the Ramgad crater, although that has not been included in the impact Earth impact uh, database. So there's a database which is maintained uh, that is not included as of now, as of today, uh, which I checked, but it will soon be included. So we have three impact craters on the Earth. And uh, yes, I mean, one is close to us in um, Maharashtra, that is Lonar. These impact craters are extremely interesting. If I talk about, uh, you know, there will be 190 different stories or 190 different interesting approaches for each and every crater here. If you just go and read about any crater, I've picked up five random craters here, like the Kali crater in Estonia. This is in fact a crater field. So there are nine craters here and uh, in a forested area. So it's a very beautiful site, in fact. Uh, there's a Red Fort crater in South Africa. It is one of the largest and one of the oldest crater, more than 2 billion years old. So you can see that it is not very well preserved. It barely looks like a crater, right? So obviously, 2 billion years, uh, huge things, a lot of changes have happened on the Earth, right? So that is why it has eroded away. There is the Pingaluit crater in Canada. Uh, this is one of the crater which is having the fresh, uh, most fresh water in the world because this crater is only snow fed, only melting snow provides it water. So it is uh, having one of the freshest water in the world. There is Karankas crater, which is comparatively very uh, new crater. It is not, it's just 10, 12 years old crater. And there is a meteor crater, which, which we all know, it's probably the most famous crater uh, on the Earth. That is the meteor crater or the Barringer crater in Arizona. Now, if we just go back to this picture and we think about that, when we look at Moon, when we look at Mars, there are thousands of impact craters there. 
while on earth we are having you know just 190 confirmed craters why so why such a less record of these craters well the reason is that you know three fourth of the earth is covered with water yes that could be one thing and one that earth is a very dynamic planet wind water ice weathering erosion is continuously shaping it which is absent on moon or planets like mars it is very reduced right so this is what is making this crater record very um, less or very rare comparatively to get preserved on the earth right and which is why these are even more important if we are talking about only 190 sites in the world which are well preserved craters then lonar is definitely one of this right so the lonar impact crater it's a beautiful site right when we first go there if you just see that site that site itself is enough uh, you start wondering about uh, all the things that how it must have formed or uh, you know the impact took place what it must have been like so the first view that you get when you just stand there at the crater and uh, you know look at this view it's 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 worth every uh, effort that you made to go there definitely so lonar is like this it is a simple crater it is a bowl shaped depression it is a you know around 1.8 km in diameter and uh, it's slightly elevated on the sides that is we call as the crater rim so if there's a bowl uh, that top the surrounding what we would call that would be the rim portion of the crater so that rim is slightly elevated than the surroundings and this is how it looks it is definitely breath taking view and uh, yes it is one of the best preserved impact craters in the world if we just see how it must have formed now this crater animation which is there it is telling you about some larger craters right we are saying that lonar is a simple crater because its diameter is less than 3 or 4 kilometers generally when the diameter exceeds 4 kilometers we call those craters as complex craters so complex craters this animation is actually showing you how a complex crater is formed but more or less lonar has formed in a similar way so if we just divide the steps right one is the contact stage or the compression stage that is when the impactor came and hit on the ground that moment that is called as a contact stage or a compression stage now you can imagine that some impactor you know coming through zooming in through the earth's atmosphere at velocities greater than 12 km per second going up to 50 60 km per second at that velocity it's coming and hitting the earth right what will happen in that one second two seconds that instant that ground is going to get ruptured it is going to break it whatever material is there it is going to be thrown out right it is going to be scooped out you know just like we would throw a pebble in sand or you know in any pond or muddy water right or even in ground if we see exactly the same kind of a thing which is happening here so we can see that first there is a contact stage there is a end contact stage and the excavation stage excavation when that material is scooped out so whatever it was inside you know when that impact the hits that is now coming out that is scooped out so that is the excavation stage now how much time do you think actually goes from step 1 to step 4 that is the end excavation stage it is barely 2 or 3 seconds which are going into that so it is that rapid it is it takes place that rapidly right and between these few seconds that it happens there is a very high temperature there is a high pressure which may be you know momentary which is taking place and that is how this impact starts you know this impact uh, effects start in that instant there is a shock wave which is sent down in the ground right uh when that impactor is coming and it hits the uh, ground there is also an air blast that is the atmospheric phenomena right so we start seeing these changes when the impactor hits the earth surface thereafter whatever happens in the crater like uh, you know adjusting the ground gets adjusted or there is weathering there is erosion right uh, whatever may happen due to water wind correct all this will modify the crater 
So ultimately, what we are seeing lonar today is a product of what we have seen over thousands of years, right? So that is how the final crater will be formed in these stages. So, uh, well, another interesting fact about lunar, the why so concerned, why do planetary geologists care about it at all? It is only one of the 190 craters. 190 itself is a very rare number, correct? But another thing that we are more concerned about or more uh, interested in rather, is that it is the only impact crater which is formed in basalt rock. Now, if those who are from Pune, Maharashtra region, whatever black color rock we can see around us is the basalt rock. And this entire green region, which is shown on map, that is the Deccan basalts or the Deccan traps, as we know. And this is the lunar crater. This is the only crater in the entire world which is so well preserved in. So, what is the deal about basalt rock and an impact crater there? Well, it's the same rock that we get on Moon, the same rock that we get on Mars. So, for planetary geologists like us who want to study about Moon and Mars and how impact cratering takes place there, how these rocks get uh, affected, we cannot definitely have a field tour to Moon or Mars. But we have these sites on Earth where we can go study these rocks and, you know, as analog sites. Analog sites means which are comparable with those planets like Moon or Mars, for example. And we can have a similar kind of a field setting here on Earth. So Lonar is one of the best analog sites for uh, impact craters on Mars. And that is why, uh, again, we are more interested into this. Just to give an example about uh, how it is, you know, if we just see the inner crater wall, if we just see the inner slope of lunar crater, right? Now, this phenomenon, what we see on Earth is pretty common for us. No, water is flowing, streams are flowing. So these kind of gullies or small valleys are formed on the crater rim here, correct? This has been happening since years, since thousands of years. This is very common for us here on Earth, but not on Mars. The image below is of Mars. It is also a simple impact crater, just like Lonar. And you can see that such similar kind of gullies are also seen in the inner crater of Mars, right? Inner impact crater, whichever is there on Mars. So we try also to compare the, you know, morphological phenomena that is, how weathering on Mars must be, how erosion must be. Is it water which has caused these gullies just like on Earth or it is some other phenomena, right? So there are many such things which are comparable. You can compare rocks, you can compare morphology, right? You can, you can imagine how it must have been on those planets when uh, an impactor struck there or it collided with the planet, correct? So Lonar is perfectly, it's, it's a very beautiful uh, circular shaped impact crater. We can see it from a satellite image. You can see this. The black color that you see in the satellite image is all water. We know that Lonar crater is having a Lonar lake at the bottom. So it's a beautifully round, uh, you know, crater, circular, highly circular crater. And if you see the rocks, if you see the rocks, you can see that they are dipping outwards you know they are not horizontal now what happens if we have seen that uh, animation right what happens when all that material is thrown out it's it's it was forming a curtain it was forming an angle right in which it is thrown out or you know uh, in which it is going to hit so how the rocks and the surrounding how they are going to change and this is how they have changed if we see these rocks they are dipping they are not horizontal they are at an angle which is outward, they are dipping outwards. So this is another, uh, you know, uh, another very peculiar feature that we see at impact craters. And uh, so this same, the, these two figures, uh, these two photographs are from the lunar uh, crater rim area, the top area. And you can see that all these rocks are exposed. Uh, now in the, around the lunar crater, you can actually walk around this entire crater up also, you can go down, you can uh, just have a walk uh, down as well. And we say that Lunar is a very young crater. Now, young in terms of geology, okay? Uh, five lakh years in terms of geology is very young. So we say it is a young crater. 
and uh, a youthful crater and one of the best preserved in Basai. So if we just divide, if we just again see a satellite image or even when we go on field, like we have seen some photos here, right? Even when we go on field, we can see that uh, there's some marked, you know, distinct zones around Lonar in which you can divide some of these regions. Like there is a crater lake, which is the water part we are seeing. There is a crater basin area that is apart from the crater lake, what is the basin area? The sides of the crater, we are calling that as a crater slope. The crater rim, like I told you, this is a bowl. The top portion of that is the crater rim. And whatever material was thrown out and it fell down right next to the crater, that we call as the ejecta blanket. That is what is removed from deep below and it has come and again settled there around the crater. So on the satellite image, if you can see this bright color, the bright color that is indicating the rock which is thrown out from that this on the slopes that is the ejecta so in fact we can uh, divide these zones the geology of lonar if we have to divide it into dif distinct regions then here it would be that is the outermost ejecta that is uh, the material which is scooped out and thrown the crater rim that is the topmost the rim of the uh, bowl shape right the crater slopes the inner crater slopes or the crater wall the crater basin area and the crater lake so if we go down there and we try to figure out these regions we can definitely find out these uh, you know where we are standing whether we are on the crater slope or whether we are on the crater rim right now so many things about lunar so you know, anyone would think that it is formed in a Deccan plateau or Deccan basalt, which is a volcanic region, right? This entire Deccan traps so or basalt uh, rock, it is it is of volcanic origin. It is formed when lava cooled down here millions of years back, and this is entirely volcanic origin, volcanic uh, the basalt rock which is there. So obviously, when Lonar was first um, discovered, when it was first identified in 1823. For a very long time, for a very long time, uh, you know, more than a century, it was thought that this is a volcanic crater. That is probably there was a volcano here and that is, you know, it just erupted. This is a crater which is uh, created due to a volcanic eruption. So this was the belief which went on for several hundred, uh, several, uh, you know, decades which went on. It was only somewhere around in 1960s, 1970s, early 1970s, when the concept of no, it is not a volcanic crater, it is an impact crater, it came into picture. Until then, there were many theories. Now, I have just listed them here. Uh, if, if any of you is interested, you pick up any one paper, uh, you will see that it's very interesting how this, you know, origin about Lonar has actually, uh, you know, taken place. Lot of papers, hundreds of geologists have worked, and finally, whatever we see today is a lot of effort of these people who have identified Lonar as an impact crater. So, a volcanic crater would also look a very similar manner, right? This is just a photo that I've put up to show you how a volcanic crater would look like. So, visually, you know, just visually, when you see an impact crater and a volcanic crater, you will not be able to differentiate whether it is uh, impact origin or volcanic origin. This has happened lakhs of years before, or in some craters, billions of years before. Obviously, we don't have any uh, you know, eyewitness uh, to record these kind of crater events to tell that it is because of volcano or because of a impact, correct? So what do we do? How, how can we conclude that how we, we can say that it is an impact crater or it is a volcanic crater? So yes, there are the clues for that. So geologists, geoscientists actually don't the role of uh, field detectives in this case, and they gather clues for this impact. So in impact cratering, in the study of Lonar, all these studies have played a very important role to identify it as an impact crater. You know, to go from that 1823 to present day when we are able to say that it is an impact crater it has taken all these studies which are there so visually morphologically 
uh, what you can see, the rocks there, any evidences if they are showing, not only in the rocks which you can see, but if you chip them out, uh, you study them under a microscope, just as uh, you know, other sciences, botany, zoology study, rocks study uh, under microscope, right? Similarly, geologists study minerals and rocks also under microscope. So there are a lot of evidences which we cannot see on the surface, but if you just see them under the microscope, it will give you a lot of evidences. There are geochemical evidences, there are geophysical evidences, all these together, and more importantly, to the shock features which are there, that is what is identifying any crater, not only Lonar, any 190 craters in the world have been confirmed by this methods, by these methods. So the shock, what is the shock features that we are talking about? Shock basically means that when that impact took place, it affected the rocks, it affected the minerals. They were shocked, right? We, we say that these got shocked. There was some metamorphism. There was some change in the minerals. There was some change in the rocks, right? And this is what is recorded. This is what is recorded in the rocks. So the rocks are ultimately holding all these clues together. And what is left is only to go out there on field to gather these evidences, to study them on field, to study them in lab, and to say concludingly that yes, it is an impact crater. So for any site, any impact event site, these methods remain very important, right? So in fact, I told you all about the Ramgad crater, which is recently uh, you know, classified as a confirmed impact crater. Even Ramgad crater has a history where there are a lot of theories, controversies, which said it's a volcanic crater, but uh, geologists have gathered all these evidences on field and finally it has been proved to be an impact crater, right? So we will see these features, what do we see? How is it on field? How does Lonard look like? So as you're going through the crater slope, uh, apart from the beautiful view that you will always keep getting, uh, there are these rocks which you can see, like I told, they are dipping outwards. They are not horizontal, but they are at a particular angle, which has been formed due to the impact. And you can see that they are slightly inclined or they are dipping, like we say, in the towards the outside, right? So these are how the rocks are deformed. Uh, many, many places around the crater, when we uh, went around, we saw that the rocks are... Uh, you know, they are not uniform. They are something like, you know, if something hits any rock, how is it going to be shattered or how is it going to be fractured? How these kind of uh, fractures will be seen in the rocks? So it's a very disturbed, it is a very disturbed kind of a sequence. It is not, you know, it is not in the form of ABC just in a horizontal, but you know how, if that is all mixed up, how those sequence would be. So we are seeing evidences of rocks in that manner on field. We are having evidences which show that shock wave phenomena that we spoke about in the animation also we have seen that whenever there is an impact, a shock wave, you know, just like an earthquake wave, a shock wave is going out through the rocks. It is affecting the entire rocks which were present there. And we do see these kind of features that probably how those that wave must have affected this. So this is not the impact which is hitting the rocks. This is the shock wave which has been preserved on these rocks, right? We see that uh, in the same outward manner in which we have seen the rocks, we have seen the rocks are going outward in a particular angle. And in the same manner, we are seeing some kind of minerals in them, some kind of cavities which were there. They have also become elongated in a similar outward manner. Not only that, when we spoke about the clues which you have to find in that, these kind of brachias remain a very important find on field. Now, what are these brachias? Now, when that impactor hits, everything is going to be thrown out in a mixed manner. It is not going to be uniform. So what it is going to happen, uh, there will be rocks from the surrounding, there will be some soil material, there will be, a, everything will be broken, shattered material, right? Now, over a period of time, when that shattered material simply, you know, consolidates or it simply compacts to form a rock, you will have a rock that is also going to be very heterogeneous. It is going to be very mixed up rock. 
which is called as a brachia. So these are the brachias that we found there, which is a very mixed kind of a rock, right? So not only brachia, not only normal shattered rock, but we found evidence of a suoid brachia, which is, if we see the figure below, if you see closely, it is a very black color material. That is a glassy material, which we say. That is nothing but because of the momentary impact. There was some amount of rock which melted. There was some amount of rock which melted and again crystallized into these kind of minerals. It solidified. This is what we call as glass. So finding this impact glass on the field was one of the most useful evidence to conclude that, yes, it is an impact site. So this is what, in fact, geologists have found on the field for Lonar. They have found rocks in which this glass is very well preserved. This is a melted material for due to that impact which was there because it was not stable at that high temperature, at that high pressure. So it melted and it consolidated again into this kind of a glass. So impact glass, the brachia, the suite brachia, uh, the shockwave features, all, all these are the clues which we found on the field. And that is how, uh, you know, even geologists in right from 1960s when they concluded that, yes, Lonar is an impact site. So all is out, everything is out there. You know, the rocks are literally recording each and every event. It is only waiting there. You have to go out there and explore and find out these things, right? So uh, we did get a few samples back to the lab. And in lab also, we found that we found one mineral called as masculinite. Now, again, why, why so much issue about the masculinite? Why is it so important? Because this mineral, masculinite, it is found only at impact sites. Masculinite cannot form under any given earth condition. It is not formed due to volcanism. It is not formed due to any, uh, you know, any steam explosion in the uh, ground. It is not due to subsidence. No other phenomena is known to produce masculinite except impact cratering. Right? So it was very useful that uh, this particular masculinite also, uh, in fact, in the 1970s literature or the papers or the study that we see, we found out that the masculinite was one of the most, you can say, uh, yeah, revolutionary evidence which was put forth by the geologists there. All these things together definitely confirm Lonar as an impact site. This went on for a lot of time. In fact, impact cratering as a science is very young comparatively, I would say. It was only somewhere in the 1950s, 1960s that uh, people started taking interest in the impact sites, not only uh, Lonar, but world over. It was only around then. So if you see, it is uh, you know just a 60, 70 year old branch uh, that we would say. So obviously the next question that we ha would have that, yes, there was something which completely messed up the rocks here, you know, changed the rocks and formed new minerals, melted the rocks, shattered the rocks. Where is the culprit, right? That would be the next question that where is this impactor? Have we found the impactor? No, we have not found the impactor. At Lonar site, we do not have the impactor. There's no evidence of any, uh, any or of a, you know iron rich meteorite or any anything uh, in fact if we see globally also there are very few impact sites which have the trace of the impact impactor in the form of some meteorites like if we talk about the meteor crater of arizona yes we are having iron nickel rich meteorites there so that is how we know uh, that the impactor was say iron rich or it was nickel rich but for lonar we have not able to find that what must have happened to that? Well, probably the impactor was not so large. Uh, it was few meters across. Uh, probably whatever happened in the lakhs of years, it, it got weathered, it got eroded. Maybe due to the impact, it got vaporized. It was completely melted by the impact, impact event itself. So there are many things which can be possible. Or according to some theories, they also said that the impactor was itself to a rock very similar like 
probably what we have in the area. That is why we could not differentiate it, right? So there are many possible statements or theories for that. In the same way, if we have to talk about that, how old is lonar? When did this impact take place? In a Deccan trap basalt of 65 million years back, this, this basalt rock was already formed, correct? When did this impact take place? Uh, until a decade ago, we thought that this was around 40 to 50,000 years only. But in the last 10 to 12 years, there have been a lot of technological advancements and a lot of uh, isotopic studies, uh, which have dated this impact event to more than 5 lakh years. So that is the most accepted uh, date that we put lonar age uh, as of today. It's somewhere 5.4 uh, to 5.7 lakh years ago, right? So yes, that was a huge shift from 50,000 to uh, 5 lakh. But uh, due to some kind of radio, uh, isotopic evidences, that is the most accepted age of lunar as of today. So if all these things were not uh, enough uh, to uh, you know, instill some interest, uh, Lonar has a, another little companion, as we would say. So if you just see a satellite image here, this is the Lonar crater. And right above it, this is a small lake, lake or crater lake. That is the Umber crater, right? So Umber crater north of Lonar, there's a tiny lake, just a few hundred uh, meters across. Uh, so there are, again, a lot of discussion around Umber crater as well, whether it's a double impact crater, like the one we saw for Mars, right? But it's a double impact crater. Uh, there was there were two bolides which hit, or one just split into two just before it was about to, you know, impact or collide the Earth. Is it a secondary crater? Secondary crater means it has fallen on the um, lunar and whatever material came off lunar. It probably fell very near to that because of which umber was formed. Or many scientists, they actually say that this is due to the man-made activities over a period of time, which, you know, this depression is nothing but a, just a man-made uh, crater. So this still remains an open question, whether umber crater is a companion to lonar, it's an impact crater, or it is a man-made uh, depression. But mostly geologists agree that it is uh, not an impact crater. So a lot of geological concepts, a lot of geology, different rocks that we have studied. Uh, if, if you are uh, a little bit uh, curious that, OK, is it only about a geological site? Is it lunar only about rocks and you know these things finding on the field? Then you are absolutely wrong. Right, Lonar is everything that you could possibly imagine. It is having its own unique ecosystem. It is having a micro ecosystem. This particular area, Crater Lake area, this 1.8 kilometer diameter. Within that, the temperature, humidity, winds are completely or different than the surroundings. It's having its own ecosystem and a lot of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibia species, uh, a lot of microbial, uh, you know, species also which are discovered in these um, lunar lake as such. So compared to the extent of this lunar, you know, when we say it's only two kilometer across or 1.8 kilometer across, and we are trying to put so much of biodiversity right into one, uh, you know, place, a small place. So it is definitely a very rich flora fauna, which is having. It is, uh, you know, paradise for bird watchers as well. If you go there early morning, you'll see a lot of peacocks there, uh, down there. If you can, uh, if you trek down to the Lonar Lake and you go there, right? So, trails, uh, there, are, there are some farms around the crater and uh, there are a lot of plantations which are done. These are deciduous plants which are there. So, if we talk about a little about the water here, now, water itself is also another wonder or unique aspect which is there. The water is hypersaline, but it is also alkaline. Right? The alkalinity is around pH 10 to 11. Now, this actually changes from the crater, uh, you know, the lake um, shore as you go inside. This uh, alkalinity is also changing gradually as you go inside and it is hypersaline. 
Uh, this lake also is having a lot of unique microbial uh, life and there are more than 15 types of blue-green algae and different type of bacteria. So <clears throat> one of the type of bacteria resulted in this kind of, a, you know, I think whoever is, was interested in this thing, you must have definitely came across this thing. Somewhere around when we all were in uh, lockdown in June 2020, there was widespread news that Lonar has gone pink. Right, so uh, it went pink because of this kind of a bacteria, which is a halophilic or a salt living, uh, uh, salt loving bacteria, and um, the increased proportion of that because of increased salinity, too much of evaporation, no rainfall, way less water, and uh, it uh, triggered the amount of this kind of bacteria in the lake, which gave it the pink color. So this is actually again a very natural phenomenon. This is not new for uh, lakes in the world. This, this keep happening. There are many crater lakes in the world which are pink in color, especially over seasons, over different seasons, they go like this. Uh, this water is also highly alkaline. You can see it is having a lot of carbonates. In fact, in historic text, there are references that um, it, this particular was uh, soda, soda carbonates were recovered from this lake and used in soap making. So there are evidences of uh, that also from different historic te texts. Well, if you don't like any of this and you are interested in uh, just, you know, sculpture or architecture or history or stories, mythology, then still it is the place for you. The crater uh, lake that we saw surrounding that and on the top, the crater rim, there are more than 15 ancient temples there of hundreds of years back and very beautiful carvings on them, the sculpture in them. Each, each temple is having its own story of uh, mythology. I will not go into that detail. That would be a different uh, talk in itself. Uh, it is having... Uh, just to tell about, it is having one temple where there is fresh water source of a spring. There's a fresh water spring flowing directly into the temple. And that is a source of uh, fresh water for many villagers there. And uh, it's a beautiful place, you know, just if you want to know any of this, any of these things, right? So I think there's not only geology, but, you know, be it geology, if you're interested in how it formed, planetary aspects, how these impact sites in the world must be there. You know, just one of 190 sites in the world, only one preserved in Basal. Or to know about the unique ecosystem there, you're interested in, you know, you know, it can be flora, fauna, biodiversity, environmentalist, anything, anything. I'm sure that there is something for everyone out there and very few places in the world are actually like that, where you can go, out there for multiple interests and still be very happy that you have visited that site. So definitely Lonar is one of that. And it deserves to be preserved. Why I always stress on this point is because uh, of the, you know, depleting conditions which are there over a period of time, the local lights, the villagers, uh, the temples that we spoke about, they have annual fest there and um, the lacks of people who visit there and there's a lot of sewage which goes directly into the lake so many of these activities have been stopped over a period of time very recently so and uh, there are a lot of geos, a lot of individuals rather who are working towards this cause to save lonar and in that uh, this was also uh, named as a ramsar site so ramsar uh, is uh, you know it was Ramsar sites are declared to protect the wetlands. So it was only in 2020, just two years back, when Lonar was also de uh, declared as a Ramsar site to be protected well. The, some of the temples there are uh, also by the Archaeological Survey of India. They are maintained by them. And uh, it is also declared as a geo heritage site or a national geological monument, which we say. This is uh, maintained or this is declared by the Geological Survey of India. Now, these efforts need to be done because this is unique. You know, if we just uh, pick up the craters which we have seen in the world map, uh, if we see those craters, you know, just a comparison, many of them are very well protected. They have a guided tour. Uh, they have a proper ticket system to buy there. They have museums in the vicinity. So 
definitely things for lonar are planned in this manner but uh, it should not be late so apart from knowing about the geology and the wonders i always uh, you know strive to tell you all that whoever would visit there just you know do not go there as travelers rather go there as explorers so you can see all these things and spread the knowledge but definitely more towards protecting such a site it is definitely worth visiting there's something for everyone there and uh, i think with that i would like to conclude this but any questions uh, let me know so uh, uh, oh sorry. yes yes uh, Yes, uh, thank you, Sneha, ma'am, uh, for all the insights and for igniting the interest uh, amongst our viewers, viewers for about uh, Lonar Lake and the crater. So I'm sure many viewers have now uh, started like wondering about the crater formation and about the Lonar crater itself. Uh, uh, people who are watching uh, through YouTube, uh, you can ask your questions uh, in the comment section. Uh, on the live chat. <clears throat> uh, meanwhile, ma'am, uh, I have a question. Like from geological point of view, I have a question uh, that uh, what kind of uh, impact do tectonic plate movements or uh, earthquakes usually have on craters? Like not particularly lunar crater, but craters mm -hmm. in general. Okay, uh, to have an impact or to have a tectonic plate movement or any. Suppose at this site, lunar site also, there was an impact of, uh, sorry, an earthquake of magnitude 6, magnitude 7, it probably will not affect it, right? But if magnitude 8, 9 or higher, yes, you know, like any other place, there would be some fractures in the ground, you know, some material would break, right? So these kind of things can happen. But uh, I think we have been very fortunate in that way that we are in a very stable area for that matter. Lunar is in a, a you know very stable area of the earthquake zones. Uh, we have one uh, small question regarding the research uh, going on about craters. So it says, can you please suggest some uh, recent research, research papers regarding the geology of lunar crater? OK. Uh, definitely, uh, yes, whoever's directed that question, if you can just drop me an email, I can send you some um, papers about Lonard specifically, if you're interested. Uh, about impact cratering, if you uh, any of you is interested, there's a beautiful book called as Traces of Catastrophism, which is giving you all these things right from the beginning that I've mentioned morphologically how crater is or uh, how the impact rocks are, uh, you know, will. So there's a freely downloadable book uh, on the web, which is called as Traces of Catastrophism. And it's a beautiful book to begin with. Okay, uh, so, yes. Yes. So if we compare the crater, other craters in India, like uh, Ramgad or uh, mm -hmm. Dala crater, which yeah. are uh, not that well preserved or uh, as compared to lonar. So is it because lonar is in basalt rock, that's why it is well preserved? Uh, is it like that? Uh, okay, so the Ramgad and Dhala crater that we are having, uh, one of the main reason they are not well preserved is because of the age. They both are going somewhere. Ramgad is around one more than 1 billion years old and Dhala probably goes beyond 2 billion years. In fact, Dhala crater would be one of the oldest, it would probably be in the top three or four oldest craters in the world. So if we are talking about a time span of 2 billion years old, right? it is not going to be preserved in that kind of a manner. So a lot of things have happened over these 2 billion years, you know, weathering, erosion. So that is why they are completely, you know, not as dynamic or not as beautiful sites as Lonar would be. That is why it is, uh, we say that it is one of the best preserved crater. And uh, yes, definitely one of the uh, other reason, like you mentioned, it's a basalt rock. So basalt rock is also a very strong, compact, dense rock. So it is preserved well. Uh, but that not would not be entirely true because these two craters are also having uh, compact rocks, crystalline rocks, Ramgad and Dhala. They are not in the loose soil as such. Uh, that's a small question. Uh, that's a question regarding: uh, Is it possible that the size of the crater is small because the bedrock is basalt? 
Uh, yes, bedrock is basalt. That is one reason. Another reason for the size of any impact crater is the impactor size itself. So the impactor itself was few meters across. It was not very large, right? In general, it, any impactor can create a crater of say approximately 20 size, uh, 20 times more than its own size. This is a very general statement, but approximately it is that. The size of the crater would also depend on the gravity of the planet. So if we compare a same thing happening on Earth and a same thing happening on Mars, then the, the because of the difference in the gravity, the craters which are forming, they are also going to be different. So size would depend on the impactor size. It would depend on the gravity. It will depend on the rock type also. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. What could be the size of the meter that impacted lunar? So few meters across, uh, there are again different uh, simulations which have models which have been proposed and papers for that as well. So, uh, so anywhere between 20 to 100 meters. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no questions and from the participant side. So yes, uh, with that, we can uh, conclude the talk for today uh, about geological wonders of lunar crater. Uh, thank you once again, Sneha ma'am, for all the insights and for sparking the interest among the viewers. Thank you, JVP, as always, for giving me this opportunity. This has become an annual ritual for me, and I'm more than honored uh, to be a part of uh, JVP. And uh, definitely, you all should visit there uh, once at least. So, uh, yes, and uh, so with uh, the stock uh, on 4th, on March 4th, 5th and 6th, uh, JVP is organizing a study tour to the Lonar Crater and the Lonar Lake. And with all these insights that we got today, and if you are wondering more about Lonar Crater, yes, you can visit uh, Lonar Crater with us on March 4th, 5th and 6th. So we'll be leaving, uh, leaving from Pune uh, at 6.30 on 4th March evening and we'll be coming back to Pune uh, on 6th March at 9 p.m. And all the other details about the uh, visit and about the study tour can be uh, found on our website jvppune.in and uh, the link for the particular event, the link for Lonar study tour is uh, given in the comment, uh, comment section of the YouTube. So yes, and any questions if you have regarding registration and uh, regarding the details of the study tour, you can uh, contact Amit Kadlaskar, uh, one of our GVP member, and his contact details are given in the website uh, on the website. So yes, uh, with that, thank you participants for joining us online. And uh, thank you, Sneha, once again for the talk.